Hey, grade sixes, I want to show you a different way, a new way of doing long division. And some of you have shared that you're finding that uh, this way, the traditional way, is very confusing. You've tried to do it for years. Well, I'm going to show you a new way that you might find simpler and be able to use successfully to do your questions. First of all, let's look at the old way. This is the traditional way of doing it where first of all you do the division family. So the first thing you do is dad tells you to divide. So you would divide uh, 45 by 12 and you get 3. And then mum tells you to multiply. And then sister tells you to subtract. Brother tells you to bring down. And then rover tells you to repeat the whole process again. So then you'd say how many 12's in 92? you would divide and then you multiply and then you subtract and then you bring down and you do the whole thing again and you end up with your answer and you get the answer of 376 remainder 11 but what I want to ask you is does that really make sense compared to everything else you've learned in, multi in uh, mathematics First of all, we're teaching you that this is a 4. Is that really a 4? No, it's 4,000. What operation do you know of that tells you that that's a 4 instead of a 4,000? Never does it become that in addition, subtraction, multiplication, and yet division, we seem to throw the rules out the window. In what other operation do you start with the thousands column and not the ones column? Only division. And... Why does it work? Well, that's very difficult to explain. The thing is, it does work. And if this method works for you, then that's great. Keep doing it. But I want to show you another way that certainly makes a whole lot more mathematical sense at our grade level anyway. So, let's take a look at this number. We've got 4,673, and we want to divide it into 15 different groups. So you could get 4,673 different cards and start putting them into groups. And so you've got 15 groups and you keep laying them out to find out what your answer is. That's one way of solving it. But there's another way. You can say, okay, we can multiply some things by 15 and we can start subtracting from that number until we can get this number so low that we can figure it out. Let me show you how it works. I'm going to put a line down the side here, and rather than putting our quotient or answer up top, I'm going to run it down the side of this line. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start subtracting from this big number to get it to a more manageable number. So I'm going to multiply this 15 times 100. And if I multiply 15 times 100, I get 1,500. And now I subtract it. And so once I subtract, I've got 3,173. Well, 1,500 still goes into this, so let's multiply by another 100. And the same thing, we get 1,500 there, we subtract. The number you can see is getting a lot smaller. It's still bigger than 1,500, so let's take another 100 out. And you subtract again to find you've got 173. Now, we can't multiply by 100 anymore because 100 would be too big. But let's see, what can we multiply by? Well, what about 10? We can multiply by 10 in our heads very easily. We're just adding a 0. So when we multiply by 10, we get 150. We subtract it, and now we're down to 23. Well, how many 15s go into 23? Just one. So you put the one down. You put the 15 down, and you subtract. And now all we have to do is we have to add up our quotient on this side of the line. So the answer is 100, 200, 300, 310, 311. And the answer that you can put up top then is 311 remainder 8. And you can put that right up top. And the nice thing about this is that look what we're multiplying by. We're multiplying by hundreds, tens, and ones. 
Everyone can do that. And that's easy. You don't have to worry about multiplying by odd numbers or figuring out things. All you're doing is subtracting whatever you multiply the 100 by from the main difference. Let's take a look at a couple more questions. So we've got 24. And we say, OK, what can we multiply 24 by to take a significant chunk out of 3,684? Well, let's draw our line down. And can we multiply by 1,000? That would give it three zeros. That would be way too big. So let's multiply by 100. When we multiply 24 by 100, we get 2,400. And then we subtract. The number's getting a lot smaller. Now, we've got 1,284. And we know that 24 times 100 is 2,400. So 1,200 is just over half. So now we can multiply by 50. And if you multiply 50 times 24, you get 1,200. Subtract that, and our number's down to 84. Well, what can we multiply 24 by to get, or 24 by to get 84? Well, let's multiply by 2. 2 times 24 we know is 48. So then we subtract that, and now we're down to 36. What can we do it by? 1. 1 times 24 is 24. Subtract that, and 12. Our remainder of 12 is smaller than our divisor out front. So we know we've done it right. Now we have to add up our answer. So it's 100 plus 50. That's 150. 152. 153. And that's our answer. So the answer is 153 remainder 12. How's that for simple? Let's try one more. In fact, what we'll do is we'll do the same question, but we'll do it in a slightly different way. I want to show you that there's many ways to come about the same answer. So again, we take 3,684. So it makes sense to multiply by 100. So that'll be the same. We subtract. We get 1,284. Well. Now we can't multiply by 100 because that would be too big. But you can multiply by 10. And if you multiply by 10, that's 240. Now you subtract. 1,044. Well, 10 still goes into it, so let's multiply by another 10. You subtract 240. You subtract. Multiply by another 10. Subtract 240, and you get 564. That's still bigger than 240, so let's multiply by another 10. And we end up with 240. We subtract 324. Guess what? We can multiply by another 10. And we subtract that, and we end up with 84. Now, 84 is smaller than our 240, so we can't multiply by 10. But we can multiply by 1. And if you multiply by 1, what do we get? 24. So we subtract that. We get 60. What can we multiply by now? Well, let's do another one. 24. Subtract that. It's still bigger than 24, so we can multiply by another one. 24. Subtract. And we end up with 12 as a remainder. Now, 12 is smaller than our 24, so we know we've done it right. We just have to put our uh, line in and add up our total. And as we add them all up here, we've got 100, 110, 120, 130, 140, 150, 151, 152, 153, and that's how I came up with the 153 on the bottom. And so then what we do is we put this way up at the top, and you can see that we're getting our same answers. Well, over here, we ended up thinking of saving us some uh, pencil ink by uh, multiplying by 50 and by 2. But you don't have to with this method. All you have to do over here is multiply by hundreds, tens, and ones. And by that way, you know what to do. All you have to do is add a zero or add two zeros. Or maybe it's a bigger number, and you multiply by uh, a 1,000, which would be three zeros. 
But this is a way you can practice to get division right. You might need a little more paper, but more importantly, if you understand this, if this helps you actually solve a division question, then uh, make sure you use it. So once again, this is a different way to do long division, but a way that works. And hopefully, this helps you. Enjoy.